The EEG is recorded by measuring the potential difference between different set of electrodes. These different set of electrodes are placed on the scalp. So I will start by drawing, let's say this is the scalp, and you put electrodes on different localizations. So I'll use a different color to show the electrodes. So we have an electrode that's placed here, an electrode that's placed there, another one placed here, another one here. The order how we place these electrodes and how we identify the exact location where these electrodes should go would, is a part of a different tutorial, but I'll give you just some rough approximations of where those electrodes are placed. let's say that this is the left side of the scalp and this is the right side of the scalp. Electrodes that are placed on the left side end with an odd number, those placed on the right side end with an even number. The location whether the electrode is placed in the frontal region, temporal region, parietal region or occipital region tells you whether these are labeled F, T, P, and O. So if there is something which says F3 for instance, it means that this electrode is placed on the frontal region on the left, on the left because it ends with an odd number. If there is something, if, the, if you find F4, so F tells you that this is recording activity from the frontal region and 4 tells you 4 is an even number so it tells you that this recording is from the right side of the scalp. On EEG we use amplifiers to amplify the potential difference between two electrodes. So let's say that we are measuring the potential difference between these two electrodes. So we label one electrode as F3 and the other electrode let's say was T3. That we are measuring the potential difference between these two, three, two electrodes. The way we demonstrate it here is this triangle represents an amplifier. F3 is the input one and T3 is the input 2 for the amplifier. The amplifiers in EEG recording are differential amplifiers. Basically what it means is it only amplifies the potential difference between F3 and T3. If F3 has just one charge and T3 has one charge, there will not be any amplification because there is no potential difference. The electrodes, the amplifiers are set in such a way that if input 1, so whatever is here, if input 1 is more negative than input 2, so this is input 1, this is input 2, if there is an upward deflection, so something like this, it may have two meanings. Either input 1, that is this input, is more negative than input 2 or input 2 is relatively more positive than input 1. If you have, let's say this is another differential amplifier, this is input 1, this is input 2, and you have a straight line, it tells you that there is no potential difference between input 1 and input 2. If you have an amplifier where there is a downward deflection, so this is a downward deflection, this is input 1, this is input 2, it tells you either input 1 is more positive than input 2 or input 2 is relatively more negative than input 1. It does not tell you the absolute potential either on 1 or 2, it just tells you what is the difference between these two electrodes.
let me move on to the next page here so let's draw here let's say that this is an EG you have FP1 compared to F3 if we write it in this way and let's say that this is an EG and you have a downward deflection here and it goes it continues so when you write it in a horizontal format the first of these is input 1, the second one is input 2. So in this case FP1 is input 1, F3 is input 2. We'll talk about the localizer in just in a little while. Then we have F3, this is the second channel, and you have C3. And let's say that this there is an upward deflection here. then you have C3 to P3 there is still a slightly upward deflection but a not a whole lot and then you have P3 to O1 and you do not have any deflection so what does this tell you so if this is what you see on the EG so you may note that F3 is input 2 in channel uh, channel 1 but then it becomes input 1 in channel 2 likewise C3 is input 2 in channel 2 but becomes input 1 in channel 3 and likewise P3 is input 2 in channel 3 but becomes input 1 in P3 if you place electrodes in such a way that they form a chain that the input 2 then becomes input 1 input 2 becomes input 1 you call it a bipolar longitudinal montage so bipolar bipolar because you're comparing two different poles longitudinal montage montage so this is a bipolar longitudinal montage and we are trying to localize the spikes here here we the, there is a downward deflection so it means either FP1 is relatively more positive or F3 is relatively more negative but in channel 2 we see that there is an upward deflection so it means either F3 is relatively more negative or C3 is relatively more positive and then we when we compare C3 and P3 we say that C3 is relatively more negative or P3 is relatively more positive and we don't see a potential difference between these two so things that are common so the the deflections are common in the first channel and second channel and the co electrode that is common there is this F3 electrode F3 is common so it is more highly likely that we have let me use a different color let me look at this area it tells you that the maximal negativity so actually it is F3 which is negative which is more negative than FP1 so that's why you have a downward deflection then F3 is more negative than C3 so you have an upward deflection and C3 is slightly more negative than P3 that's why you have the tiny upward deflection so when you see something like this you call this a face reversal a face reversal so you see the face is reversed between these two channels and when you see a face reversal it helps you in a longitudinal bipolar montage face reversal tells you that most likely this is an area of epileptogenicity or excitability